Israeli troops have stormed the largest functioning hospital in Gaza. Now, the army describes the operation at the NASA hospital in the southern city of Khan Yunis as precise and limited. It says there is credible intelligence that Hamas, which carried out the October the 7th terror attacks, held hostages in the complex. Mobile phone footage appears to show Israeli forces entering Nasser Hospital in Han Yunis, the main medical facility in southern Gaza. The Israeli military says it was a limited operation aimed at finding hostages' remains. We have credible intelligence from a number of sources, including from released hostages, indicating that Hamas held hostages at the Nasser Hospital in Han Yunis and that there may be bodies of our hostages in the Nasser Hospital facility. Further south, some 1.5 million displaced Palestinians are now living in cramped conditions in the border city of Rafa, where Israel is still believed to be planning an assault. But international warnings are growing louder. Large-scale military op operations in densely populated areas risks extensive civilian casualties. Australia believes this would be unjustifiable. Our message to Israel is listen to the world, do not go down this path. The United Nations says there is no safe place for Gazans to evacuate to, with so many people amassed along the border. The UN's humanitarian chief has warned of a spillover into Egypt. Given the scale of the devastation, the UN's trade agency says Gaza will need international investment on the scale of Europe's post-war Marshall Plan to recover after the fighting. But for most Gazans, the future is far from their mind. They're struggling just to survive every day. Our correspondent Amian Isif joins us now from Jerusalem. Amian, what more do we know about the situation right now in this hospital? Well, uh, the IDF has stormed the Nasser Hospital, which is uh, essentially the largest still functioning hospital in Gaza right now. They said they carried out a precise operation using uh, special forces uh, and that they made all efforts to keep the hospital in operation. Uh, their mission there, they said early on, was to recover the bodies of hostages that they claim have been killed by Hamas. So these are not living hostages, but just the bodies of uh, those already hostages already killed by uh, Hamas, according to their intelligence. Um, uh, but when they were in there, they also took several people into custody as suspects. Uh, now, we're also hearing from the staff of the hospital there that's run by the Gazan Health Ministry, which is in turn run by Hamas, which is considered a terrorist organization by Israel and several other countries. Uh, they said that the uh, storming of that hospital began with tank fire on this hospital, which killed uh, at least one person that we know so far, a patient, they claim. And uh, we have to remember that this hospital is not just being used as a hospital, but also a shelter for many hundreds of civilians that have been fleeing uh, the war-torn areas across the country. OK, and Israel also says that it does plan to move forward with its offensive on Rafa. We've talked about the growing number of international calls not to do that. Uh, what more can you tell us about um, what Israel is saying about this? Well, that's that's correct. Um, the uh, uh, plans to move ahead with this uh, ground incursion into Rafa have uh, there's been many warnings from Israel's closest allies, including Germany, uh, which sent its foreign minister to Israel to discuss uh, the, this assault on Rafa and to warn Israel not to go ahead with it until more aid can be brought into the area and until uh, Israel can come up with a credible plan that would allow civilians to exit this area uh, safely to another safe area in Gaza. The problem there is that there are essentially no more safe areas in Gaza. A lot of the land is strewn with unexploded ordinances. Uh, Israeli defense forces are operating across the country right now, um, and most of the country is rubble. Rafah is really the only city left where there's functioning infrastructure, and that's why 1.3 million Gazans have fled there and are living in dire conditions. Uh, Israel has recently 
uh, succeeded in blocking uh, more food aid that would uh, come into Gaza and uh, help uh, supply the needs of those over a million people who are there. The UN said that it would not be a party to another forced displacement, uh, but Israel said it, ha it will go through uh, with this ground offensive. Mm -hmm. And there have been reports of fresh strikes, uh, Israeli strikes, on, on Lebanon. Can you give us an update on the situation there? That's right. There seems to be an ongoing exchange of fire and of bombings across the Lebanese southern border and the Israeli northern border, which has been going on basically since the, uh, just after the October 7th Hamas terror attacks. Uh, Hezbollah is a strong Iran-backed uh, militant group, which Israel consider, considers a terrorist group, uh, which controls the south of Lebanon, and it has fired into Israel. Israel has responded. But just recently, uh, uh, yesterday, there was uh, an attack by Hezbollah, which reached deeper into Israeli territory than we've seen so far, killing one IDF soldier. And Israel responded ferociously with uh, several attacks across the south of Lebanon, killing 10 civilians, including several children. They also were able to kill three Hezbollah militants, at least three, uh, including one senior commander, which has uh, greatly angered the leadership of Hezbollah and said Israel is going to pay the price for that attack. I mean, thanks so much for that update. That's DW's Amian Isif reporting from Jerusalem there.